I have a Stanley number no. six four plane that's kind of an unusual plane and so I'm gonna do a quick uh, cleanup, tune up and a comparison between a five six and a seven. I'll start out by just weighing the plane to let you know how heavy it is. They are pretty brutal planes. It weighs six pounds, ten ounces. Here it is compared to a five, a six, and a seven. You can see it's uh, nearly 18 inches long, and uh, where the seven is 21, 22 inches long. A uh, five has got a two inch wide blade. The six has a two and three eighths inch blade, so it's a little bit wider. The seven has the same width blade as the six. They call the six a four plane, F-O-R-E, and the idea behind that is it's the plane you use first. It's uh, before the other ones. Generally used as sort of a scrub plane. It's long enough that it can be used for leveling, and yet it's short enough that you can handle it well. Some, they say, used it as a jointer if they had a smaller toolbox, they just couldn't get a 7 or an 8 in the box. So it's kind of a multi-use plane. The number 5 is called a jack plane, and that's kind of named after the idea of a jack-of-all-trades, or sort of the common plane. It's a little too short, I think, to use as a jointer, but does work well as a plane for rapid remo removal of wood as one of the first planes you might use. But the six really is a, a unique plane. I'm glad I have one. And uh, it's, a, it's a very useful plane. It's a nice size and a nice weight. Here's mine kind of before the cleanup. I'm gonna do a uh, just a quick disassembly. I happen to like, honestly, the sort of the patina of especially the lever cap. So I didn't spend a lot of time polishing that or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of polish up some of the screws and brass parts to get a little bit of a sparkle and uh, clean up the wood a little bit, uh, clean the body of the plane a little bit, and uh, sharpen the blade, uh, tune up the frog. That's mainly the thing I'm going to do. I knocked these punch pins out. That's the pin for the uh, lateral adjuster. It comes out real easy. This pin is a little more stubborn, the pin that holds the yoke. But if you uh, have a good sized punch and hit it accurately, it just takes a few blows and that pin will come out as well. Then you can get the yoke off of the frog and you have a perfectly flat surface. You don't have to avoid anything sticking out. So I was able to just rub the frog face against sandpaper to take any imperfections out of it. This thing was pretty rough. It was pretty pitted and it was kind of dark and I just wanted to get that surface to be a little bit more smooth and a little bit more true because it is where the blade rests once it's captured by the lever cap. So I did that. I just uh, sanded that a little while and, and kind of felt good about it. And then here I'm just using my lathe and a chuck to uh, shine up some of the brass parts. I like it when the screws and the brass kind of sparkle. They're like jewels, I think, on a, on a lathe. They just make them look finished. They make them look fine. And these brass parts shine up really easily. I just use a 400 paper, then a 600 paper and then some polishing rouge and a rag and they polish up real nice. You can see how fast this thing's kind of coming around. It was in pretty rough shape but with a little time with a file, a little time with sandpaper, it looks pretty good and, uh, and here it is uh, in the the knob is sort of a finished look and you can just, it just it's a nice sparkle to have for the plane. Here's the uh, brass part that holds the tote and I pretty much treated it the same way. I spun it in the lathe, used 400 paper, then 600 paper, then polishing rouge again, and just like the brass nut for the knob, 
this brass nut for the tote took on a very nice shine and again I think adds to the finished look of the plane when it's all assembled. Same with the screws. This is the little screw that is in the front of the tote and again it was dark, it was almost black with rust and corrosion. Just a little bit of time with sandpaper and it gets to be almost like chrome. This is the screw that holds the lever cap just the same. Little bit of time with sandpaper, little bit of time with some polishing rouge and a rag and you can get them to be almost chrome-like. This knob was actually in pretty good shape. It just needed to have uh, some smoothing. It just had some pits and dents and things like that in it from age. So I just spent a little time just lightly sanding it to, to more or less kind of clean the paint splotches off of it and stuff. Uh, rubbed it with uh, a little bit of oil to kind of warm it up and then used paste wax on it. And you can see, look how beautiful it, it turned into a very nice shiny knob. The body of the plane as well, again, I kind of like the patina. It's flat, it's smooth, so I just am applying a paste wax using steel wool. Kind of work that wax into the, you could say, the grain of the metal. And I wax not just the bottom of the plane to make it slick and slippery on the wood, but I wax the sides of the plane as well because a coat of wax will help over time to keep the paint plane from corroding or rusting. And, you know, if the planes live in a, in a dry shop, they really won't get any worse if you uh, have any kind of a protection upon them. And so I find that paste wax is just a, a real easy thing to apply forgiving and it does a good job of making the plane slippery and also protecting it from corrosion and from rusting further. So you just put that on, let it sit just a little while and then buff it off uh, just like polishing shoes or polishing a floor. You just uh, buff it off and uh, it, it gives you a very slick, smooth, very nice feeling surface and again, it makes the plane glide over the wood with no, uh, no hanging up or no restriction. It's a big plane. There's a lot of surface there, so you want it as smooth as you can get it. Uh, again, I've, I've said it before, uh, I think heft is an advantage with a plane. And in some ways, I think the heavier, the better, because you've got a lot of inertia behind that blade and a lot of stability in a heavy block of metal. So there's the body, and uh, I just reassembled the plane and gave it a try here on the edge of a piece of wood. And I said earlier that it's long enough that if you have a short enough piece of wood, it, would, it will actually work as a jointer. Uh, some have said that a plane will joint a board twice its length. So this 18-inch plane uh, will, will joint a 36-inch board uh, and give you a pretty level line, and I think I agree with that. This plane, once it was sharp, and I got it scary sharp, you can see these just really nice curls of wood just peeling off of that, uh, that board. It's a pleasure to use, again, sharp is important and weight is important and uh, this number six is just a great part of my collection i use it just because i like to use them all at one time or another and uh, it's a it's a great plane to use there's just one more view of, uh, of that just peeling off a nice even curl of wood it takes it full length a full width, a very thin, very clean, and a very level line when I'm done using it. The number six, four plane. I think it cleaned up pretty nice. I think it still has nice old plane patina, yet uh, 
it's clean and it looks like I've tried to take care of it. And again, it is a pleasure to use the Stanley number no. six four plane. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd ask you to please subscribe. Thanks again. Here's a final shot with a five, six, and a seventh.